David Coyle, and this is Real Life Worth Living. And that is an apt description of the Christian life. It is quite accurate in every way. It is the only real life there is because it is a life of faith that is based upon the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is based upon the infallible and unchanging Word of God. It is based upon a relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is based upon having the indwelling fellowship of God the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that life of faith can only be lived in faith. It cannot be lived apart from the principles of the Word of God. It cannot be lived apart from fellowship in Christ and fellowship in God the Father. And that's how many of us try to live it. And we fail. And we will always fail. We will always be failures as long as we try to divorce God from the life of Christ, from the Christian life. As long as we try to live it in our own strength and in our own power and we forget the power that we have in Jesus Christ, in uh, the Holy Spirit who indwells us in the Word of God, which is the only power that there is. The Christians in the first century to whom the writer of the Hebrews wrote in chapters 5 and 6, and I personally believe it to have been the Apostle Paul, so if I slip and say Paul, you'll realize that I believe, because of internal evidence, that Paul wrote this book, though it isn't signed. It has been assigned by scholars to some others, as well as Paul. Uh, I believe Paul is a, a, a very good choice for the writing of this book, but that's neither here nor there. The writer of this book of Hebrews wrote to Christians, and that's evident. They were Hebrew Christians, all Christians in the first century, for the most part were Jewish, were Hebrews, because the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ centered in and around Jerusalem, and so all of those early Christians and all the early disciples were Jewish, and they moved around in, uh, in an ever-widening circle uh, throughout the entire Roman Empire until Paul said, I have fully preached the gospel throughout the entire Roman Empire. Um, something worth thinking about. He may have actually preached to people who were some of our personal descendants, since most of us are descendant uh, from European nations. Um, again, that's just an aside. He says, therefore, in verse 1, and he begins with a conclusion. Anytime we see the word therefore, we need to realize it's a conclusion. It's not the beginning of an argument. It's not the continuation, continuation of an argument. It is a conclusion drawn from an argument that has already been given previously, in this case in chapter 5. Dr. Lehman Strauss always used to teach that every time you see the word therefore, you necessarily need to back up and look at the context that came before it and see what the therefore is there for. And in this particular case, uh, he's telling us or he's telling these Christians that they need to leave the principles, the first principles of the doctrine of Christ behind. They've been established in the first principles of the doctrine of Christ. They have received the word of God and been saved and born again. So these are Christians. These are people he is admonishing in verse 1 to move on unto perfection. Not something that you would tell somebody to do if they are not a Christian, if they're not saved. They cannot go on unto perfection because they don't have the foundation, the perfect foundation of Jesus Christ in order to uh, move into a life that has been perfected. Uh, he is also admonishing them to move away from laying the foundation of repentance from dead works. Why? Because they've already moved away from that. They've already put their trust in Jesus Christ. They're saved. They are Christians. They are those who have been once enlightened, verse 4. They have already tasted of the heavenly gift. In other words, they know personally, have personally experienced salvation in Jesus Christ. They have the Holy Spirit. They are partakers of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is living within them. They have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, verse 5. They're Christians. But they are weak Christians. They have stepped aside from what they knew in Christ. Look at uh, uh, verses 11 and, or excuse me, 12 and 13 in chapter 5. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first 
principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. These people have backed up in their progress in the Christian life, and they have become as weak little babies, needing the milk of the word instead of the strong meat of the word. And God intends for us to have the strong meat of the word in order to become more and more and more Christ-like, to demonstrate the proficiency of the Christian life of Jesus Christ living in us, living through us in order to perfect everything that he wants to accomplish. Now, these people are known of this writer. He says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. In verse 9 of chapter 6, he was expecting to see in them the kind of life and the kind of works that would testify of one who is truly saved, one who is truly uh, living in Jesus Christ, and he's not finding that. But he also tells us, or tells them, and this we will do if God permit. That's determination. We need to make a determination in our life that we are going to uh, resolve to live according to what the Word of God teaches us, what the Spirit of God is leading us to do, a life consistent with our personal trust in Jesus Christ, a life consistent with being children of God, of being baptized in the Holy Spirit and having Him within us, and living after the pattern that He has put before us. He has given us that demonstration of life that we need to emulate. Our Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You for these principles. We ask that You would help us to bring these things into our lives as life-building principles that we might build a life that truly honors Jesus Christ, that reflects the Word of God, and demonstrates to all that we truly are the children of God. We thank you in His name. Amen. And thank you for joining me. Join me again the next time for Real Life Worth Living.